right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. We are super excited to be having this group of dynamic panelists to talk about the blue innovation ecosystem here in San Diego. My name is Vanessa Scott, and I work in industry relations and innovation here at Scripps Institution of Oceanography, UC San Diego. Uh, before I kick it off and introduce our wonderful panelists, I am going to start with a couple housekeeping items real quick. Uh, this webinar is part of our Scripps Innovation webinar series, and it will be recorded and available on our website afterwards. Uh, we will drop a link to that in the chat shortly, so you can find recordings of past webinars there and also upcoming webinars. We've got another one coming up in two weeks. Also, we want to hear from you, so please enter questions throughout this discussion in the Q&A button down at the bottom center of your screen uh, and or in the chat and we will hold them to the end. I'm going to do a quick intro, then we're gonna go around and introduce the panelists, have them give a brief overview, and then we'll have plenty of time for Q&A. So with that, uh, I just wanna start off with kind of a quick overview of the broader San Diego innovation economy. In 2019, San Diego County saw an incredible amount of capital invested in the region. Venture capital funding to companies in San Diego County it totaled more than $3.4 billion invested in 232 deals, according to the 2019 San Diego Innovation Report by Connect. San Diego has also been ranked first for the concentration of military and defense assets in the world by the Brookings Institution, and second among the world's most inventive cities by Forbes. Also in 2014, Forbes ranked San Diego as the best place to launch a startup. San Diego's existing port infrastructure, thriving scientific and naval communities, growing technology economy and geographic location have all contributed to the region's blue economy and created a unique hub for maritime innovation and a blue technology community. San Diego has a robust pipeline of regional resources that support visibility, growth and scale of ocean startups, including TMA Blue Tech and its Blue Tech Incubator, the Port of San Diego and its Blue Economy Incubator, which we'll hear from today, U.S. Coast Guard Blue Tech Center of Expertise, the National Defense Industry Association, AIM Partners, California Sea Grant, the Brink Small Business Development Center, Ocean Visions, and Scripps Institution of Oceanography. And with that, I will introduce our panelists. Uh, we have from the port, Paula Silvia, who is program director for the Port of San Diego Blue Economy Incubator. Paula holds a Master of Science in Aquaculture from the University of Stirling in Scotland and a Master of Business Administration from the University of Phoenix. Prior to her role at the port, she worked as a research biologist at NOAA and as an offshore aquaculture program manager at Hub SeaWorld Research Institute in San Diego. In these roles, her work focused on offshore aquaculture development in Southern California and Baja California, Mexico for food production and fisheries replenishment purposes. Paul has been with the port since 2015 when the program was initially created. And in her role, she oversees a variety of planning and pre-development work aimed at developing environmental and economic opportunities for aquaculture and blue technology businesses in and around San Diego Bay, as well as supporting management of the port's blue economy incubator. Thanks for being with us today, Paula. Next, we've got Phil LeBlanc. Phil is a consultant with the Port of San Diego Blue Economy Incubator. He earned his master's degree in environmental management from Laval University in 2006 and worked as a research coordinator at Memorial University in Newfoundland for a wide range of applied research projects from mapping marine protected areas to monitoring receding glaciers. In 2010, Phil co-founded a clean tech startup company specializing in the design of sensor-enabled real-time monitoring applications for remote environments. In 2016, Phil joined the Port of San Diego, combining his applied research and entrepreneurship experiences to lead the development of the Port of Blue Economy Incubator. And since 2020, he has been working as a consultant focusing on accelerating innovation to address the ocean's challenges and advance the blue economy at ports. Thank you for being with us, Phil. Next, we have Ido Sella, who is the CEO and Chief Scientist at eConcrete, which is a startup that went through the Port of San Diego's Blue Economy Incubator. Um, eConcrete is a startup that specializes in reducing the eco ecological footprint of concrete-based infrastructure in urban coastal settings, while integrating principles of ecological engineering in the planning and construction of coastal infrastructure. He is a marine biologist and ecologist and a Tel Aviv University graduate, who's conducted and managed research projects in different environments in over 20 countries worldwide. 
with patent centers name ranging from aqua farming and biological materials to construction technology applications. He is considered a forerunner in the field of ecological enhancement of coastal and marine infrastructure and is involved in projects such as offshore wind turbines, port facilities, coastal armoring, and land reclamation around the globe. Thank you, Ida, for being here. Next up, we have Jack Pan. Jack is the founder and CEO of Ocean Motion Technologies. He received his doctorate here at UC San Diego Scripps Institute of Oceanography. Prior to Scripps, he worked as a consultant and team lead at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab and led the development of coastal ocean monitoring projects. Jack's also participated in several projects, polar research expeditions to Antarctica, and is recipient of the Antarctica Service Medal for his instrumentation work and sampling in extreme environments. And lastly, but not leastly, is my colleague, Gwen Nero, who is the director of Start Blue, a new accelerator from Scripps Oceanography and Rady School of Management, UC San Diego. And Gwen leads corporate relations and innovation here at Scripps. She also created and directs the Scripps Corporate Alliance, a program that facilitates collaboration between Scripps and corporate members. She also works closely with the office of UC San Diego Office of Innovation and Commercialization and innovation programs across the UC San Diego campus and San Diego region to support Scripps research commercialization, collaborations with industry and talent recruitment of students and postdoc fellows to industry careers. Gwen also represents Scripps on, Scripps on the boards of TMA Blue Tech and Ocean Visions. And this is a very impressive panel, if I must say. <laughs> and with that, I would love to hand it over to Paula and Phil to talk us, uh, tell us a little bit more about the Port of San Diego's Blue Economy Incubator and uh, some of the companies that they are working with. Paula, you're muted. I'm sorry, gosh. No problem. Um, so I don't know if we can, uh, or if the slides are up, I can't see them on my screen, um, but that that's okay. Um, I, Let's see. I can I can speak to basically. Oh, there we go. Okay. The uh, we're gonna just talk, give a little bit of a background um, on the Port of San Diego, and then basically a, a, a short intro on the unique role of ports um, in the blue economy, not just on the west coast of the United States or in San Diego, but really globally. Um, but as a quick background, the Port of San Diego. In, in the background of this photo is San Diego Bay which is bordered by five cities, um, San Diego, National City, Chula Vista, Imperial Beach, and Coronado. And um, the, the port has been granted, uh, we're, we're, we're considered a special uh, district and uh, sort of a quasi local government state agency uh, that's responsible for about a little over 14,000 acres of tidelands. So tidelands meaning um, land and water rights in and around San Diego Bay. So we have special district jurisdiction over those um, tidelands and we work um, to support a public trust mission really in five different buckets. So we, our, our role is to support commerce, um, recreation, fisheries and, um, uh, fisheries and uh, environmental stewardship. So we're, we're trying to fill all those buckets and as, as a result of that, also expand our sort of economic base. So back in 2015, the port created an aqua, what we call an aquaculture and blue technology program underneath which of which came um, the Blue Economy Incubator, which is essentially allows us to partner with early stage companies um, and facilitate you know, economic and environmental opportunities through facilitating pilot projects. So the unique, you know, so our role traditionally in the blue economy has been with traditional blue economy industries like fisheries and shipping and sort of industrial applications. Um, but this new role as um, supporting, you know, blue economy innovation has really just allowed us to exercise our, a lot of different types of assets that we offer from expertise in permitting and entitlement of projects, um, our unique role as a landlord operator, regulator or environmental steward. And of course, you know, our bread and butter is supporting public private partnerships and um, you know, representing ourselves as champions of the blue economy. So that's kind of a nutshell, but you know, up and down the coast of the West Coast, there's a lot of different initiatives supporting um, innovation and in aquaculture in the blue tech space. And so we're, we're happy to be here. So thank you so much. And I'm gonna hand it over to Phil to talk a little bit more about um, our incubator. Thank you. 
Thanks, Paula. Uh, hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be to be part of this panel, part of the discussion, to share our, our story, uh, how we fit in the blue economy and innovation ecosystem in Senegal, Senegal Bay. And I think it's a pretty unique story that, that we have to share uh, of the port acting as a hub to as a hub and a catalyst to support the growth of the blue economy. Uh, and like Paula mentioned, in 2016, the port established its blue economy incubator. Uh, to assist the creation, early development, and initial scaling of sustainable aquaculture and blue tech uh, technology venture at the port. Uh, so per design, the, the incubator is acting as a launch pad to an entrepreneur and early stage company, removing barriers to early stage company by providing key assets and support services focused on pilot project facilitation, which is really the core value proposition of the incubator uh, being port-based. Uh, for the port to help companies to to create a pathway for companies early stage company to come in and work with the port demonstrate the technology and build a strong case study of their solution demonstrating to a port entity that they have something that works um, so what we've been seeking since 2016 is innovative aquaculture and blue tech proposal that can help address environmental challenges that the port face and that can inform future blue economy opportunities. We, we've been striving to advance a pilot project proposal that are re replicable and scalable uh, that can help other ports, harbor and coastal communities address similar challenges that the port is facing um, and that can turn further, that can in turn further support investment and in innovation in the blue economy. As shown on the, the next slide, if we can move to the next slide, uh, we have approved so far through the incubator nine pilot projects or so nine agreements with early stage company to launch innovative pilot projects. Uh, so what you see here on the map, it includes, it's a very diverse portfolio of uh, pilot project of companies include shellfish nursery operations, copper remediation technology, a driving boat wash, a smart marine application, the marine debris removal vessel, seaweed aquaculture, bioenhancing, shoreline armoring alternative, a new approach to sediment remediation in marine environments, and a real-time field sensor device for stormwater monitoring. So as you can tell, things that matters for the ports, a uh, project that would inform challenge or opportunities that, that we face as a, as a port. The uh, through, through incubator to build a portfolio, the port invested up to 1.6 million in funding, uh, provided the use of property, property owned by the port uh, to launch the, the pilot project. We obtain, we help obtain all the regulatory uh, and operational permits for the pilot project. We coordinated the installation of the pilot project and we assisted with community and me media relations. And that's kind of at the core there of the value proposition that the port is providing through its incubator, which we believe it's, it's very unique. And we believe it's also a win-win situation. Uh, the port is learning from these pilot projects, which results are addressing existing challenges. And for the incubator committee, incubator com companies, a successful demonstration of their technology at the port provides them with a strong case study for either regulatory approval or commercialization. So helping, we're trying to help companies uh, along the scaling journey. Uh, so that's what we wanted to, to show in this map, kind of what we built so far and, and, and where we're going next we, we have other companies in the pipeline, but we're continuing to seek proposal that can that can help the port meet some of this some of its challenge. So if you're a startup out there that are looking at uh, looking for places to demonstrate your technology, you think you have something that that, that could help the port, uh, please contact us. We'll be happy to uh, to to engage and, and see if there's opportunity of fit for a pilot project for the submittal of a, a proposal. So we, uh, we're very complement, we believe we're complementary to other blue economy in initiative in the region and globally, but we're not your typical incubator. So we're really focusing on pilot project facilitation. So uh, the company would need to have a, a prototype ready, uh, something to demonstrate in the port environment. So this is our story. I'll stop here and we'll look forward to addressing and answering any question and being, being part of the discussion. But thanks again for, uh, for having us here today.
Great. Thank you so much, Paula and Phil. That was wonderful. And we did get a question come in, but we will hold it to the end. Again, everyone, please enter your questions now. We'll make sure we get to them at the Q&A after everyone's given their short presentations. Uh, and with that, I will hand it over to Ido to tell us more about Econcrete and his journey from the Blue Economy Incubator at the port to where they're at now. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, hi, everyone. My, uh, my name is Ido Stel. I'm, I'm CEO and I'm uh, Chief Scientist of Econcrete, uh, a company we, I co-founded uh, with uh, Dr. Shumito called Trinko in uh, 2012. Both of us, as, uh, um, as far as we can be from beer entrepreneur, both of us are uh, graduated of uh, the zoology department in Tel Aviv University, uh, dealing on uh, different aspects of uh, coastal structures and uh, the ecological footprint of those structures, uh, as opposed to artificial reef, assessing what is the infrastructure in the water, how they function in terms of uh, community structure, et cetera. Um, at a certain point, both of us started to focus on concrete structures as 70% as of infrastructure in the world is concrete based which and and concrete is usually associated with very negative impact on on cestal environment and, and and local environment in terms of uh, water quality uh, um, and dominance of invasive species uh, low biodiversity etc it's, it's a well-known fact and at, at a certain point we're starting to deal with how can we harness uh, infrastructure, concrete infrastructure, to provide a better ecosystem services. And this is where the company came with a vision of changing the way coastal construction is basically look and function. Um, we already have uh, 30 installations worldwide, uh, operating mainly in the US and Europe, and now starting in Hong Kong and, uh, and also Australia and New Zealand. Um, but really surprising, uh, um, one of the last places that we managed to showcase the technology was California because of different uh, different aspects. Uh, we've been operated through uh, the Port of LA and, and, uh, and entities and um, it's out to sea in LA uh, for a very long time, but uh, we were looking for an opportunity to uh, showcase uh, and, and, and basically uh, uh, demonstrate with a pilot project. Um, we got to the Port of San Diego through the Port of Rotterdam uh, where we uh, uh, already installed a, a few projects and, uh, and basically uh, uh, we saw a match. And, 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 I, and I must say a, a great match and, uh, and a huge support from the port of, of putting something on the scale that we just uh, deployed two months ago of, uh, of the first unit uh, that we developed, which is an interlocking single armor unit, which is uh, 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 a big name for uh, revetments, the high performance revetments. They have the ability to uh, retain water at low tide and basically mimic the habitat features of a, a natural rocky shoreline on a, a high performance and, and the slope that is, is required to, to support the, uh, the, the in that case of the Harbor, Harbor Island waterfront. Um, that's, that's what we did um, with a lot of support from the port uh, during the process of marine construction in San Diego, where entire team is stuck in Europe and in Israel and monitoring the construction through drones. Uh, and, and I must say that uh, uh, working with Paula and with, with, uh, with Phil, uh, uh, this is what make it happen of, of, of doing, deploying 72, 3.5 tons units with a 500 ton crane and two barges uh, while we're doing it uh, from our computers. Um, and, and I think it's, it's, it's showing uh, how the port was uh, pushing this forward. I must say that nothing was delayed during COVID and, and uh, um, it's, it's just emphasizing how, how the port and the importance that the port is seeing on, on pushing new technologies. Was it too quick? No, do you want me to share the photos that you have of the- Of course, of course, process? yeah. So those, those are the units, this is a, basically the first time that we've been uh, deploying the, this specific unit, which we uh, worked on in a, a process of R&D and validation for the last uh, two years. Um, it's called the Coastal Lock. Um, it's an interlocking system uh, for uh, uh, steep slope revetments. And what you can see is uh, um, this unit is designed in a way that we can rotate it on different orientations in order to provide different habitats that are uh, typical to rocky shorelines. Uh, it can be deployed in a way that it can retain water at low tide. It can be deployed in a way, as, as you see at the toe, 
uh, that we can create the overhangs that are very, very typical to the front of the reef. Um, the chemistry of the concrete is, is, is basically controlled with, with, uh, with that technology. Uh, we neutralize the concrete in a way that we allow more species to settle on the concrete uh, from a larvae stage. Um, so uh, um, we, in most of our project, we more than double uh, the biodiversity, some we even, we even more than triple. Um, and the process is very simple. We just uh, 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 make sure that the, the, the substrate is open for the competition and can be utilized for, for, for as much species as we can. Uh, as those species that are usually sensitive uh, as they go into with interaction, say some species that in the larvae stage are very sensitive to the interaction with the substrate, uh, we balance the concrete in a way that, that, that allow them to settle and to uh, develop on the concrete surface. And uh, in the next slide, I think, You can see the size and, and the scale of this project that was done uh, uh, remotely. Um, in order to, uh, to, to get this pilot in, there was the need of two barges, an excavator, almost two weeks of construction uh, um, on the shoreline in order to open the reprap, install the unit. It now is going to be uh, uh, go through a, a monitoring process of two years, uh, both the structural performance and biological monitoring that, that's going to be done every six months. Um, and uh, of course, uh, um, we really hope uh, to have a peer review paper at the end and, and to publish the report uh, together with, uh, with the port. Um, this was installed 60 days ago. And uh, on the next slide, just give you a reference of, of how the technology is performing. And, and this is another unit, a different unit, a small unit that we use for a reprap installed in more than 20 ports around the world. And uh, what we, we, we're creating is basically a structural unit comply with all the requirements of, of uh, coastal construction, but at the same time, allow for a, a more balanced uh, biological community to develop. Uh, we're talking about infrastructure that is designed for 60 years to 120 years design life. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, work with the industry and, and we, Econcrete invested a lot of work on making sure that we in line with the requirements of those, uh, of, of those projects. We, we in line with the, U.S. standard, European standard, Australian standard, et cetera. Uh, working with the largest uh, engineering firm in the world currently on a on, on large project uh, of, of that, that kind, uh, project of breakwaters, revetments, seawalls, and, and now also going for uh, a lot of work in the offshore industry of uh, um, protection of uh, wind turbines with, with basically concrete structures that are designed. Uh, there's a structural use for them, but allow for a biology to develop on them. Um, that's what we do. Excellent. Thank you for that excellent presentation and, and wonderful images to really drive it home, Ito. You know. uh, again, everyone, please feel free to enter questions and we will get to them after everyone is done presenting. Um, with that, I will hand it over to Jack Pan to tell us more about how he founded Ocean Motion Technologies, his journey from scripts through uh, the UC San Diego and San Diego Innovation Ecosystem. Well, you're on mute, Jack. Oh, sorry about that. No worries. Can you share the slides? Okay, so, and, and before I started, I just wanna say, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's very impressive. I know a lot of um, uh, Benthic ecologists have been advocating for this type of engineering projects for many years and um, I'm glad someone's doing it. Thank you. Um, so uh, thanks for the introduction earlier, Vanessa, and um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, next slide. So um, I'm with a company called Ocean Motion Technologies, and we are fabricating a off-grid modular ocean wave energy device uh, that's controlled by a advanced artificial intelligence system. So that means the uh, physical hardware of this device can uh, adapt to ambient wave conditions and it can optimize power output in a variety of geographic locations. And the, currently most of the commercial partners that we work with focus on uh, small scale applications at sea. So this means uh, low power off-grid applications for data buoys and moorings, uh, for ocean observation, maritime monitoring, uh, uh, offshore aquaculture monitoring, and uh, uh, surveillance for coastal security and defense. And uh, personally, I'm a uh, polar oceanographer by training at Scripps, uh, like Vanessa mentioned earlier. And this training is what really inspired the 
founding of this company. Uh, and I was asked to speak about my experience kind of rising out of this scripts and, and the broader uh, ECSD ecosystem. Uh, next slide. So in 2015, I was deployed at C uh, once again. And the, one of the many tasks we had to do was to conduct this routine maintenance service on data buoys in the Southern Ocean. So this means to clean the solar panels and to switch out the batteries. And, uh, uh, and it just kind of hit me, you know, why are we using solar when there's plenty of wave energy from the ocean? Uh, now this was back in uh, 2015 and we didn't find any commercially uh, available small scale wave energy device. So uh, we kind of decided to do this on our own. Uh, next slide. And um, very early on, we participated in uh, these innovation programs at UCSD and we were taught to validate our thesis by talking to uh, customers and validate our business model or refine the business model. And this led to our team establishing working relationships with uh, multiple commercial partners early on. Uh, and we have effectively made them part of our team. Uh, so we're getting feedback um, based on realistic customer needs to achieve better product market fit. And this is just a fraction of the partners we're working with and they're sort of laid out chronologically. And the point of this is to show that, uh, you know, scripts didn't directly introduce us to our customers, uh, but it's always about knowing people who know people. Uh, and, uh, and also it's so nice to see Paula and Phil here uh, bring their personal knowledge and expertise to this discussion and also representing uh, a, a very important major end user here locally. Uh, and we hope to continue our dialogue to better understand how our technology can benefit uh, the Port of San Diego. Next slide. And uh, because we're, uh, back up one, yeah, thanks. And because we're such a customer focused company, uh, this market centric approach has brought us a lot of success in terms of securing resources and uh, uh, that are necessary to take this company to the next level. Uh, so uh, we were involved in the Triton Innovation Challenge since 2016. Uh, and this is an effort, uh, a collaboration among the three major schools in uh, ECSD. Uh, and we won second place uh, in 2018. And this, at the same time, we set up shop uh, at the TCI facility, which includes a machine shop and tooling facility. And we have also received support from multiple organizations and agencies. We were awarded a SBIR grant from the Department of Energy. And prior to that, we received a CalSeed award from the California Energy Commission. Uh, and we have also uh, entered into a field credits with the uh, Sandia National Lab and uh, National Renewable Energy Lab. And the development there is funded by uh, DOE vouchers through the Teamer program. And uh, I have also uh, we have also participated in uh, numerous competitions and we have uh, received support from the Eastman Foundation and the Venturevel Foundation. Uh, and late last year, we were part of the Clean Tech Opens uh, finalist competition as one of the top six companies nationwide. Uh, and all of this was uh, made possible because we were taught early on to focus on our customers uh, and be very pragmatic uh, with our commercial development. And uh, there are many opportunities looking ahead and uh, that includes the Department of Energy's Powering the Blue Economy Initiative uh, and the United Nations Ocean Decade. And these programs will continue uh, to drive the, uh, the development uh, of better and more reliable power at sea and help the blue economy to shift uh, to a big data paradigm. Um, uh, next slide. And, uh, and that's all I have. I just want to thank uh, Gwen and Vanessa uh, and everyone involved in supporting this ecosystem at UCSD. Uh, I also want to take a moment to acknowledge the leadership of Director Margaret Leinen uh, that made this vibrant ecosystem possible. And the access to this ecosystem really helped us uh, and many companies like Ocean Motion uh, to jumpstart and, and they really made uh, this, this a, uh, become a successful venture for our entire team. Um, and that's all, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Jack. I love those pictures. That was great. Um, and everyone, again, please enter your questions in the Q&A and chat, and we will get to them after our final presentation. And with that, I will hand it over to Gwen Nero, Director of Start Blue and Scripps Corporate Relations and Innovation. Thanks so much, Vanessa. It's really a privilege to be presenting along with the panelists that we have here today. 
Um, if you could put my first slide up, please. So as you might imagine being a part of UC San Diego, Scripps Oceanography is a very active component of what is the campus uh, innovation ecosystem with a myriad of incubator programs, maker spaces, um, and licensing resources as well. Scripps has spun out businesses in life science, ocean and food technology industries and close collaboration with our Office of Innovation and Commercialization and enjoys very active, close working relationships with corporate partners in Scripps Corporate Alliance, supporting licensing, sponsored research and workforce development. Today, I'm uh, really excited to share with you our newest program. This is called Start Blue, which is an accelerator in the Start R series, and it's a collaboration for Scripps with Rady School of Management. The Start R series of accelerators has been supporting new startups led by our business students, women and minorities, teens and veterans for over nine years and has graduated over 200 new companies total. So Start Blue is the newest accelerator in this series that supports the formation of science and engineering startups that are tackling ocean focused challenges and solutions. And it's open to teams from across San Diego County, which we're particularly excited about. We're combining the expertise in STEM centered entrepreneurship. That's really been the hallmark of Rady programs and Start R and uniquely blending into that the ocean science and industry expertise that we have not only at Scripps, but across the region and some of the partners that you see here on this panel as well. Start Blue will start in October of this year and th run through next May. The fall will be more curriculum intensive. Teams will have weekly lectures with experts from not only business, but also uh, addressing topics on the complexities of technology development in the marine domain. The winter and the spring uh, will bring teams out of the classroom and into the region for bi-weekly site visits and workshops, which will be offered in collaboration with our program partners, which you can see at the bottom of the slide there. Teams will have access to technical facilities like select maker spaces to support early prototyping. They'll have support of our executive in residence, Chris Ward, and our mentor team. And they'll also be able to leverage the member benefits of the industry associations that we're partnered with, like TMA Blue Tech's Blue Tech Week. Um, as Vanessa mentioned, I'm the, on the board of uh, TMA Blue Tech's. So we're excited to be partnering with them on this new program as well. So there are some really great opportunities to connect uh, our teams with potential partners, collaborators, and investors um, for funding of your new program. Um, on a personal note, I'll share that I'm just continually impressed and excited by the San Diego Blue Economy. I've been in this role at Scripps for just over five years, um, and there's been a ton of growth um, at Scripps and in our region um, and the resources that it offers scientists and, and businesses are um, just unparalleled, I think. The port, uh, TMA Blue Tech and industry associations like we're working with SD Mac and NDIA offer great opportunities for companies that are already investment ready, two of which you heard from today, however, I find it still a challenge for our newest ocean innovators to get off the ground and develop their go-to-market strategy. So that's really the gap that Start Blue is focusing on. We will consider ourselves a success with this being a new program when we're graduating teams that are moving into more advanced programs like, like the ports um, and securing SBIR funding, for example. So you'll go through our program and you'll leave with a preliminary pitch deck, um, but also a network of domain experts, entrepreneurs, and potential funding partners. So Jack is a great example of all of the learning and the expertise that we have developed over the past three years and what we are packaging uh, for teams to take advantage of with this new program. Next slide, Vanessa. Perfect. Um, so as I mentioned, we're launching this year we are currently accepting applications for our first cohort through July 2nd, 
and we're open to teams um, from across the region, but we ask that you have a San Diego presence because we intend to be in person starting this fall, um, but there's no requirement to have a UCSD affiliation uh, to participate. Uh, the program is no cost and we don't take equity in our teams. Um, and all of this is made possible from grant funding from the Economic Development Administration, the Department of Energy, um, and California Sea Grant, as well as generous philanthropic support. Um, so I encourage you, please, in, in yellow there is the website. Please visit the website to see our um, great group of advisors, partners, and you can download a snapshot of what the curriculum looks like. So with that, I will hand it back to you, Vanessa, and I look forward to discussion. Excellent, thank you so much, Gwen. So exciting, so excited for us to start Blue Accelerator. Um, all right, so now we are opening it up for Q&A. So please everyone enter your questions uh, in the Q&A and chat. We've got a couple here already queued up, which is awesome. Thank you so much. Um, looks like the first couple are for the port. So Paula and Phil, I'll let you uh, answer those. So the first one is, what is the process of proposal submission or getting in touch with you? Great question. We didn't cover that for the lack of time, but the, the first touch base is any inquiries. If you think you have a, a solution, and that, that could be a fit for the poor, just get in touch with Paula and I. So it's basically getting in touch with us. We talk about the, the, your company and we look at, uh, we explore opportunities for a pilot project together. And if we, if we think there's a fit and then the company, your company can embark into our four step competitive review process. So basically there's a pitch deck requirements. A company needs to submit a proposal um, that gets reviewed internally by the port. Uh, so we conduct extensive due diligence process to ensure that the project, the pipe project is a fit, that it's a good business model, that it fits within uh, the port's mission. And then if that's the case, we have the company put together the proposal to advance that to uh, step two, which is a incubator committee review internally at the port that review the proposal, review the opportunity that staff bring to their attention. And it's basically a shark tank at the port. So the the, kind of the committee makes a decision who uh, move forward or not. And step three is a review by the leadership of the port. And ultimately the board of port commissioner makes a decision for who's, which company gets funded. Um, and then we move forward through negotiation, sign up of agreement, and we'll get started with, um, with uh, the launching of the, the pilot project itself. So that process can take six months, depending on the readiness of the company, can take a year. So there's really no requirement there. There's no requirement of when you should be submitting your proposal and when the review process should end. It's kind of a, an uh, organic process where we get engaged with the team. And I think that's where our core value proposition shines the team has the, an opportunity then to connect with decision maker at the port. What we try to do is to, in, this, in the early stage of review of the proposal, is to schedule a meeting with subject matter experts at the port to really make sure that we're addressing a challenge they might be facing, depending on what the solution is. If it's something that address some of the challenge or the port uh, Arbor Police Department face, they need a drone, for example, well, we're going to reach out to them to Kind of make a pitch to see if we should take this to the next step to get them engaged in supporting and being part of the pilot project so that's kind of a nutshell the the, the process if you go on a website there's an application form you can you can download that explain what needs to go into the pitch deck and there's an email there how you can reach out to us but don't hesitate uh we we love doing what we do so reach out hope that answered the question paula anything to add Excellent. Thanks, Phil. And um, we just dropped that link in the chat for your guys' website. So please uh, visit that website and you can find out more about how to get in touch with them directly. There was one follow-up question uh, for the port. Where do you get your funding finances to direct towards the incubator? And how much of the port money goes towards the incubator portfolio? So as we mentioned so far, 1.6 million in funding was separate divided between the companies. So it's on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on what the company needs. Uh, to, to launch that pilot project. The funding goes directly to support the pilot project itself. So we share the cost of installation, for example, and, and other things. And there's a lot of in-kind as well. So the funding is budgeted each, each year in the Aquaculture and Blue Tech uh, program. Uh, so basically there's, there's funding available every year to support pilot project. 
Um, so it comes directly from uh, from the budget, operational budget of the Aquaculture and Blue Tech program. So it's, it's an investment by the port. And that's why it's so important for us to make sure that the pilot project deliver uh, multiple benefits to the port and the region. So we're looking at social benefits, environmental benefits, and the financial return um, to, to kind of align with, with the port mission. We're looking at like Paula mentioned, pilot project that address that that help address the challenge we face, but that fits in those buckets uh, that that are the trust responsibility of of the port, fisheries, uh, commerce, navigation, and so forth. Um, so it's budget by the port. If that's that Excellent. answer, Paula. Thank you, Phil and Paula. Wonderful. All right, we've got a couple questions here for Ido Econcrete. Um, first up, do you need to regularly undertake cleaning of the biofouling? And what about acceptance by the natural ecosystem? Is there any kinds of leaching that occurs? So first of all, we embrace biofouling. We don't, we don't, we don't scrape the unit. We, we, um, this is bioprotection. If, if we, we need to get, uh, um, to understand that it's, it's, it's a good thing for infrastructure to have biology growing on it and a solid, what we call biogenic buildup, which is the secretion of calcium carbonate by different marine organisms that do it on the surface of the concrete, like barnacles and oysters, uh, uh, bryozoans, et cetera. Um, it protecting, it, it's actually protecting the concrete. It's protecting the concrete in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that it's, the concrete is not protected by any other methods. Um, chlorides, for example, which is a huge issue with, with concrete structure because they penetrate into, from the water column into the concrete and basically uh, uh, damaging the rebar, the steel inside the concrete. Uh, um, so, so this biogenic buildup is, is, is a great, great, great barrier for this, uh, micro cracking. So, uh, uh, we're talking about intertidal habitats, which are, uh, uh, exposed, exposed to air and have a different, uh, variation of the different temperature that, that they experience during the day. It's something that, uh, basically, uh, uh, create micro cracking on the surface of the concrete because of the, of, of, of those, uh, uh, changes of temperature. This is something that is buffered by, uh, this, uh, biofouling that develop on the surface of the concrete. So no scraping. We we actually want to promote them. We if 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 we have more and more biology growing on the surface of the concrete, with time there is more and more secretion of calcium carbonate. Suddenly you're starting to see species that you don't see in concrete structures. Suddenly you're starting to see uh, um, uh, in fauna, uh, marine boars that can go into the con into the into the calcium carbonate and basically uh, start to address a concrete structure in a way that they address natural rock. Um, so there's there's multiple benefits of having biology growing on it. Regarding the leaching out. This is what we do. Um, if we look at concrete for marine construction, which is in line with the requirements for marine construction, it's not just cement, sand, and aggregate. Uh, um, it's a mix. It's a soup of chemicals uh, for uh, issues of freeze and thaw and retarder and plasticizers. Uh, you won't believe how many chemicals are involved now in the concrete infrastructure. And they have an impact on the ability of the concrete later on to support biology. If we look at Roman concrete, for example, in the past, uh, he had beautiful recruitment of, of, of biology on it, and, and there's in the structure and you can see that. But uh, the curing time of that concrete is, is 30 days. So, uh, and now the concrete, uh, are currently the, the curing time is 12 hours. Uh, so, so the industry is, is, is changing. Concrete is, is uh, for marine construction is, uh, is really a, um, a really high performance commodity. And because of that, there is the, um, those associates um, impact that we need to address. And, and, and we need strong bridges and we need strong seawalls and we need pier piles that will be strong enough to support vessels docking on them. But how can we do it and, and, and utilize them and harness them to provide us ecosystem services? How can we use them to provide us almost the same benefits as we get from the natural environment? And instead of putting more and more artificial reef, for example, utilizing the structures that we have in the water because we have a lot of pier piles and we have a lot of seawalls uh, um, and we need to make sure that we are uh, using those before we put anything additional in the water. Great, thank you, Ido. Um, we've got a question here for Jack and Gwen from Ben. Uh, it's great to see UC San Diego startups succeeding and a San Diego Blue Tech program taking off. I'm curious, how is Ocean Motion Technologies or similar startups sharing experiences and insight to advance and refine Start Blue? So I'll kick that off. Uh, thanks, Ben. Thanks for joining. Um, we have a group of program advisors who will be working with closely uh, throughout the program to inform 
the mentors that we partner our team with to inform the curriculum. So you might imagine um, being open to teams in the blue economy, we could get teams that are um, in eco-concrete e -concrete space, in ocean motion technology space, in aquaculture. Um, we're open to a variety of different teams. We wanna make sure that the curriculum is customized and, and meets the needs um, of the group that we're working with. Um, so we're working with our program advisors to inform the curriculum, to inform the mentors and the support that we provide um, uh, throughout the program and on an annual basis. Um, we're already talking with Jack about how we can get him uh, presenting and sharing his story as a, as a founder um, with our team so that they can learn um, some of the, the ropes and somewhat worked and somewhat didn't work, Jack, I think as you would share too, um, from those who have already gone through this process. And uh, to build on what Gwen mentioned, um, in addition to this network effect, uh, which is really to be able to connect with the mentors and other uh, uh, innovation uh, ecosystems that are very beneficial to our development uh, and be connected to mentors, uh, we can, we are also, uh, you know, connected to uh, other uh, innovative blue tech startups uh, and really critically think about how these new innovative products that are uh, in the R&D pipeline <clears throat> can benefit our own projects. So one example is, uh, you know, through the network of the port and also uh, uh, ECSD, uh, we were able to uh, con be connected with these companies. One of them is making this very innovative biofilling product that's using graphite and we have been working with them to code our uh, prototype. And now I'm looking at, you know, uh, e-concrete. Um, you know, I can easily foresee maybe in the future, there are opportunities for us to work together. Namely, you know, the anchor point of our device could be using, uh, you know, rather just than you know, cinder blocks, which is what we're using right now. It could be, you know, a little more uh, eco-friendly design be added to our uh, prototype. So that's, that's uh, these are some of the ways uh, that I think uh, we could, uh, you know, uh, uh, help the ecosystem grow uh, in a more meaningful way. Great. Thanks, Jack and Gwen. Uh, we have another question. Gwen, I think it's tailored for you about from Evan. So does the curriculum have any specific classwork towards financing ocean-based businesses? Yes, um, we will look at that both in the curriculum, but more specifically in uh, the workshops. So we'll not only help you develop a pitch deck and work on pitch presentation, um, and you'll have opportunities to uh, present at pitch competitions throughout the program, um, but we'll also have workshops on how to develop, how to write grants and develop SBIR proposals, um, a variety of different funding strategies you might be interested in. Excellent, and there's a question that's pretty much applies to the group and addressed to everybody about IP. So um, I guess I could start with the port uh, and then maybe over to Gwen, but how does uh, the port and UC San Diego take IP on the projects? And then from the startups perspectives, um, you know, what has your been experience with, with IP and your startup? That's a great question. Uh, it comes up all the time. The, the board's position on that is if you come with your IP already developed, there, there's no there's no rights for the port to be involved. The on the in the agreement that we write with each company, it's a pretty standard language where we say things such as if the joint the private project, if they join IP developed together, then we'll consider that in a sec, separate agreement. So it's it's kind of soft, but there's there's really no uh, it hasn't been a barrier for companies to work with us. You know, their their IP is their IP. What we're interested in is supporting the pilot project bridging that gap, helping remove those barriers for company to come work at the port and show that their, their technology works. So uh, we don't necessarily take any IP unless we work together on something that is brand new, then we'll talk about IP, but if not, uh, you're good. And we have a, a similar approach to what Phil just described. I'm assuming this is coming from a place of being an external company, maybe concerned about the university, um, uh, owning or being assigning, uh, being assigned intellectual property. Um, and so in that case, if you're an external company with your own IP and you decide to go through this program, um, we, we would not, you know, ask anything and, and be a part of that in, 
intellectual property. If there's new IP that develops that is part of collaborative research and um, that, that's another story that like Phil just said. Excellent. All right, we've got another question here asking about uh, from Miles. Um, how do you recommend receiving feedback from industry on product or service ideas early on? Um, from the startups case, how have you received that, something like that, Jack? And then from also from the incubator accelerators, how are you facilitating that kind of feedback early on? Okay, uh, great. Uh, I'm sorry, before I answer that question, could I just make one more comment on IP? Because I think this is something that needs to be said about the university and academic system. I think traditionally from a historic context, people have this intuition that if you bring something into a university ecosystem, you know, the IP department is the tech transfer is just gonna, you know, jump on it and then you're done. And, you know, like they're gonna figure out a way to charge you. These systems were the case 50 years ago, but things are changing and people realize technology innovation, uh, especially partnering with university needs these new IP pathways. And uh, I can testify, you know, no problem. So please don't feel, you know, be afraid to partner with UCSD and Scripps. Uh, with these pro for these projects. Uh, now, uh, in terms of getting feedback from customers, um, I think it's really important to make a product that customers actually need. So, uh, you know, really to take advantage of these ecosystems and incubators to do an uh, adequate amount of research uh, to propose a project uh, or a product that uh, uh, the customers and in end users actually need. Uh, so in our case, uh, to get to big data in the ocean, power is really the limiting factor uh, in our analysis. Uh, and because of that, we are working on a power solution that would lower maintenance and add additional power. Uh, so that means you can approach any customer and they'll be very interested. Uh, so it's easy to form commercial partners that way. Uh, and slowly, as you're doing more and more R&D, you can build them into our, your team. Uh, and they will give you uh, uh, feedback uh, that's based on realistic, realistic needs. Uh, and that in turn will help you achieve um, better product market fit. So um, yeah, it's, a, it's kind of a positive feedback. Maybe uh, adding Jack on, on, and I completely agree with what you said, um, regarding the way that we operate, you, you, you arrive with a mature technology and you want to showcase the technology, and this is the pilot. It's not a proof of concept. It's 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 already a developed IP proven in different areas or in different vectors, and you want to approach a new territory or or a new application. So the IP is is, is set. You know that you can create something that can be uh, a market and and be uh, uh, useful to the industry, and in and there is going to be a, an interest for, for from client to sourcing this. Um, and you and you're looking for a platform, and uh, uh, for example, in in our case, demonstrating the performance of an infrastructure, it's not an easy process. Uh, uh, you need a strong partner to show to showcase this. So so the process that we did with the port was 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 arriving with an IP, arriving with with solutions, and we have installation in other regions, and 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 saying we want to target this region, the West Coast. We want to show performance within the West Coast. We want to. Uh, uh, um, and showcase a new product that we're launching. Um, and, and I think that's, and, and, the, and the platform that we were given by the port was, was amazing because it's, 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 it was completely in line with what we needed. And I think in a way it was in line with what the uh, port was looking for. Yeah, thanks, thanks for that, the Edo. And I, and I would agree, Jay, customer discovery is so important, finding that product market fit. And um, the, the, the case study with, with Econcrete it's just to represent that we the, the port allow for that discussion to take place early on in the process we concrete to talk with this should make out the port folks that will you know deal engineering team for example that were concerned about will this you know will this protect our shoreline does it meet the meet does it meet the standards of uh, and typical engineering marine engineering construction then environmental conservation was interested in looking at it from a different perspective and so forth. And throughout our discussion, actually, some of the design changed, but just to fit the, 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 the site of the installation. But I think that was really important for Econcrete to receive that feedback. And I think that's something that is unique about the incubator is to allow for that discussion to take place in the first place. So 
that's why it's important um, you know, for a company to reach out to us and don't hesitate if you, you know, if you don't think you have a proposal fully baked in and ready. <clears throat> we want to engage in a discussion and create this opportunity for you to talk with potential decision maker at the port and that can help kind of inform you this, the customer discovery uh, process. So, yeah, I'll just add one last thing, you know, so that is a huge part of our process is the due diligence with not just subject matter experts and departments at the port, but we, our reach extends out into the industry depending on what the technology is as well. So we don't just operate in sort of our siloed you know, area, but we, we, we can kind of open up to different, to different areas too. And I would, you know, the other really important piece is permitting, right? So we have, it's, it's really tough to do anything in California from a permitting perspective. And it's such a huge barrier to any type of company that we are able to really offer that and our relationships with agencies and the ability to permit stuff in our own jurisdiction um, under our purview is a really huge asset that's, that, that we're really excited about offering early stage companies and even mature companies when we get there. Um, so, so just wanted to add that, but that, that, that's it. Thanks. Excellent. Well, I think we are running up against our time, but I thank you all so much for such a wonderful, dynamic, informative conversation. Um, we definitely want to continue the conversation and thank you to all who have joined us today. We really encourage you to reach out to all of us um, to continue the conversation. We wanna learn about your blue innovation ideas and startups. We encourage you to apply for Start Blue and the Port of San Diego Accelerators, reach out to Jack and Ido uh, for tips and tricks on success. Uh, we've dropped a bunch of links in the chat and we really hope that you all uh, reach out to us and continue um, to develop your blue innovation ideas and help continue to grow the blue economy uh, here in San Diego with us and all of our partners. So thank you all so much. Again, this will be, uh, the recording will be posted on our website and um, you could find our contact information there as well to reach out. Hope you have a great rest of the day. And thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.